This is reporter Julie Spencer, and I'd like to welcome you to Newsline, Iowa City. Please join me today as we take a trip to the Salvation Army of Iowa City. Well, the Salvation Army is primarily a church. We were started in uh, 1865 in London, England by a Methodist minister and his wife. And really the, the goal of what they were trying to accomplish is they saw a lot of people living out on the streets and underneath bridges. And uh, as pastors, they felt it difficult to communicate to people when they had basic human needs that were unmet. And so William and Catherine Booth started out basically just giving people soup and soap and uh, getting them cleaned up and then trying to take them into the church setting. Uh, they found out pretty quickly that that was still a little bit of a difficulty. And so really they just started to focus on the East End of London back in 1865 on helping people's needs. They started to open up soup kitchens. Um, they were pretty instrumental in uh, labor laws. They opened up their own match factory at one point because they were um, uh, basically uh, upset by the way children were being treated and, and there was child labor and labor standards. And so uh, the Salvation Army kind of grew as it started to meet different needs. And within about 50 years, the Salvation Army was in over 50 countries. My wife and I have been here since July of 2003, and we are appointed here by the Salvation Army. Much like the military system, the Salvation Army appoints its officers or its pastors to locations. And usually it's a three to five year time period. Uh, we've been allowed to stay a little bit longer, and we hope to stay another three to five years if possible as things continue to grow and, and we enjoy the community and our family enjoys being here. Um, the reason I started to join the Salvation Army when I was nine years old, I went there as a kid, and our family received a lot of social service help. We got involved with the youth programming activities, and then we uh, uh, were helped through the social service window, like I said, started to be a part of the church. And for me, um, you know, had it not been for the Salvation Army as a young man, I'm not sure where I'd be today. The guidance and the leadership and the spiritual direction that was given to me gave me an opportunity to see that I could be more than what maybe my whole family situation was telling me. So it really, for me, was an opportunity to grow as a young man, to gain confidence, to, to get the uh, idea in my head that I could go to college, I could be something. And so my, my path with the Salvation Army started as a young boy, and I continue to serve today for those reasons. You know, the services here in Iowa City really have changed over the 20 years that we've started. Um, I believe back in the flood of 93, there was a real need for a soup kitchen type uh, program. And so over on our building in Highland Court, they started to operate a soup kitchen out of a small facility that, that started to grow over the years that it was around. And when we moved here in the uh, early 2000s, they built a soup kitchen specifically for the purpose of uh, housing, you know, 60, 70 people a night if needed. And uh, I'm certainly glad they did that because we, we've had those numbers anywhere from 40 to 60 to 70 a night consistently over the five years that I've been here. And so uh, having a facility for a soup kitchen was important. The other services we provide are vehicle repair vouchers uh, up to $60. We also uh, offer gas vouchers for folks getting back and forth to work or hospital visits. We offer local bus tickets as well as some Greyhound bus tickets for family emergencies. Uh, we have a shower facility and a laundry facility where folks can come and do up to four loads of laundry per family per week. And so that really uh, helps out a lot in a lot of the cases where electricity bills and water bills are starting to climb. We also give away food boxes. And then, of course, during Christmas time, we're pretty uh, familiar with helping uh, with our Toys for Children program through Project Holiday. And that's coming up here pretty shortly. But that's really one of the bigger services we offer at Christmas time. I know we help thousands of children and thousands of families with, uh, with an opportunity to uh, give their children basic toys and things under the tree. It doesn't come from the Salvation Army. It doesn't say Salvation Army on it. It really gives the parents an opportunity uh, to, uh, to give their children a nice gift. We have a wide variety of people that we serve. I mean, obviously, we serve low-income families, single mothers, single fathers, uh, homeless individuals. That's probably the, the main population that we serve as far as our social services. 
but we do have a, a great youth program that we do and that would be you know middle class to uh, lower middle class folks that come in as well as low income families so really we have a pretty diverse population of people that we serve i say the main group that we serve though are probably going to be lower income folks who are s receiving some kind of governmental assistance as well as homeless individuals Funding in general from the Salvation Ar for the Salvation Army in Iowa City comes from the community of Johnson County. Uh, we receive, I believe, about $4,500 from FEMA to help with some of our soup kitchen efforts. So of our budget this year, that's about $420,000, only $4,500 of that is designated from the federal government for help with our soup kitchen. So the rest of that money comes from generous donations throughout the community. That's obviously people are aware of our red kettle effort, and that'd be one thing that I'd want to encourage folks to do. If they go to our website, icsalvationarmy.org, there's a link on there where they can sign up and help us with our red kettle effort, volunteering at a location. Uh, as Christmas approaches us, that's really our most critical time when we're raising money. Between Thanksgiving and Christmas, we raise about half of our annual budget. This year, we're hoping to raise $225,000 again, which is uh, about half of the annual budget. And so we'll need help from the community to ring the bells and to raise the money. Then throughout the rest of the year, our funding comes in primarily through mail appeal where we're sending mailings out and through the community about different things that are happening within the Salvation Army. And then we receive support back from those groups. In addition to that, our church, uh, our church members tithe and uh, support the church aspect of the Salvation Army. So all of that money that comes in, other than that $4,500 that we get from FEMA, is, is raised in the community. And it's a, it's a wonderful thing to be able to say that what's happening in our community uh, need-wise is being met in our community by those generous donations that are coming in. And uh, 85 cents of every dollar that's raised through the Salvation Army uh, goes to direct clients service in some way. If, if that's uh, the soup kitchen or the youth programming or whatever it might be, those, those funds are going directly to those client services. And so that's a great return on an investment from a family that may be wanting to give to help support another needy family or somebody else's child in some kind of a, a program. Well, this is our chapel facility. This is where we have our uh, church services on Sundays and Thursday nights, as well as uh, we use this for uh, Tuesday night programming. This is where our young ladies will practice dance, and we'll have anywhere from 20 to 40 girls in here, depending on how many show up. So it's, it's really our main uh, place for worship, as well as uh, programming. Well this, well, this is the main area when folks come in for basic client services. They would come in here, and this is our social service office where we have Deshaun that uh, is uh, director of our social services and uh, gives folks an opportunity to sign up for food ba baskets, uh, clothing vouchers, vehicle repair. All of those things will be done through this window here. This is our conference room slash classroom slash multi-purpose room. This is really where we do a lot of the work with the children and our youth programming. Uh, various uh, groups will meet in here throughout the week and on, on Sundays for uh, different types of activities. And so this really is the, the largest space that we have for any group activities that we do. This is our basic uh, uh, hallway, if you will, to, that leads to our day shelter and our soup kitchen. Um, some of our offices that we have for youth and family programming. A couple other classrooms that we have throughout the facility. This is our uh, one of our day shelter areas. This is where clients can come and sit and uh, uh, just relax. We have some computers that are available with different games and, and things like that. Down here we have our laundry room where people can do up to four loads of laundry per week. Gives a great opportunity for someone who's struggling, doesn't have a wash and dryer at home and kind of expensive to go and do those things. That's a great tool for them to be able to use. Down here we have our shower room, where again folks can, it's basic, but folks can come and take a shower, get cleaned up and, and hopefully uh, ready for a day of work or come here really after a day of, of work maybe and get cleaned up. And then this is our soup kitchen. This is where clients will come if, we, uh, if, if they want to take advantage of what we serve 
uh, at supper time and on Sundays we serve at lunch. We uh, have a great facility here to prepare food and Diane, our cook, is in the kitchen getting ready for tonight. So she's getting everything together for that. It's just a great full-size uh, commercial grade kitchen where we're able to prepare food in a safe way and uh, maintain it to temperature so when we serve it, it's done to meet health standards. And uh, we, we play around with the configuration of this room. If we're having a program go in here or mostly it's just used for the soup kitchen, we offer uh, bread and things like that that were donated from Hy-Vee and other various places throughout the, uh, throughout the community. This is where we would uh, not only store food that's given mostly primarily through the Scouting for Food Drive, uh, but other residents as they bring items in gives us a chance to uh, uh, put together a food box or use it to help supplement our soup kitchen and the meals that go out each day. We have a walk-in cooler. I don't know if you want to get any shots of that. That might help here. Situation as well. Ooh. And again, we try to keep food to temperature and maintain food standards so that we're serving safe and, and uh, good quality meals. We have a lot of great generous donations through restaurants and businesses that work with table to table uh, and, and help support us. And then finally I'll show you one other spot. It's a little messy but not too bad. I'll show you kind of this. If you want to get a shot of this enclosure here We'll have folks that will bring in blankets or clothing items or toiletries or something of that nature. And uh, this is where we sort and separate and good folks help us do all of that so that we can get it right out to clients if they need it. Give them an opportunity for some of those, uh, some of those things. But I have volunteered here since 93 is when I got started with the Salvation Army. So I go out in the canteens like this spring or summer, uh, from June and July, two months, we was running the canteen. So uh, we come up here every Thursday, you can catch us here. And we pick up and put stuff up on the shelves for the, then we have a garage sale here the third Saturday of every month. You can buy clothes for $2 a bag. So we enjoy it. We know we're helping somebody, so that's why we do it. Not for the money or the glory, we just do it because we enjoy it. Help the people. Yep, <laughs> help the people. Well, the future of the Salvation Army in Iowa City really depends on the needs of the community. Uh, we are in the process of starting uh, what we call a needs assessment, and we're going to be sending out surveys, uh, hopefully within the next couple months, to residents and businesses and uh, community leaders within the, the, the Johnson County area, trying to discover what are the needs that are still being unmet within this community. And then with that, we'll take that information, look at our services we currently are providing, uh, one of the growing programs that we have going on is our youth programming. And uh, over the last few years, we've really seen an increase. It, it uh, operates somewhat like an after-school program, although we only meet uh, once a week on Tuesday nights now. And then we have some programming on Sundays. And these are uh, children who get an opportunity to learn different life skills as well as uh, musical talent. We have a dance group that goes on for our boys. We have a gymnasium and the city of Iowa City has uh, graciously rented the Grantwood Gymnasium facility for us to use that uh, for our programming as well as recreation. So we, we obviously need, know that the need is growing. We need a larger fa uh, facility. And so one of the things we're trying to do right now is figure out what the needs are in the community and then base any future decisions on that study and what comes back. So I think the future of the Salvation Army in this community is strong. We, we're well supported. The community does a great job in, in funding us. And uh, we're so grateful for those gifts and those opportunities to lend a helping hand. And whatever the need should be, we'll continue to meet that need as, as best as we can.